Okay. Um, so this is all uh, joint by the source lineup. Uh, he's not here, so if you happen to run into him, he doesn't look very much like me. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so we're making puzzles out of 120 stuff. Uh, we're making verb puzzles to be specific. So a verb puzzle, you have all these pieces that have notches, and you have to put them together uh, to form some sort of self-supporting structure, often a very symmetrical structure. And so I'm going to talk about uh, a family of verb puzzles uh, that we constructed based on the 120 cell, which we call quintessence. So what's the 120 cell? It's one of the four-dimensional regular polytopes. So these are the four-dimensional versions of the three-dimensional regular, regular polyhedra, so the, the tetrahedra, for example. And sort of with analogy to uh, regular polyhedra, so say the dodecahedron has as its spaces regular polytopes with the next dimension down, so regular pentagons. So the uh, 120 cell has three-dimensional faces as well, or if you like, cells. So it has 120 dodecahedral cells, 720 pentagonal faces, and lots and lots of edges and vertices. Okay, so how do we draw this picture? We need some way to take a four-dimensional object and get it into three dimensions so we can see pictures of it or 3D print it. So we do this in a two-stage process. The first is radial projection. You've got something sitting there in four-dimensional space, and we're just going to radially project it onto the unit sphere in four-dimensional space, which is also called the, the free sphere. And then the second step is this thing called the stereographic projection. And I'm going to explain over the next few slides uh, what that is. So, um, so in general, stereographic projection takes you from Sn, the n-dimensional sphere, which is the unit sphere in Rn plus 1, down to Rn. So I have to remove a point. So I'm going to remove the north pole of the n-sphere and then project it down to Rn. So the simplest case is when n is 1. Um, so S1, otherwise known as the circle, I'm going to remove a point, and uh, then it's going to move back to R1. Well, here's the formula, but here's the picture. So I've got the circle here, and I've marked the north pole here, and the line is going through uh, the circle here. And I just draw a line from the north pole, and it hits the line somewhere, and it hits the circle somewhere. And the map is just take this point on the circle, and map it to the line here. And that happens to be the equation here. And uh, so, so one thing to notice, suppose that I take a line that goes up here, so it's, it's very, uh, very near the north pole, I get a point which ends up very far out near infinity. So things sort of blow up as you get near the north pole. And in general, when n is bigger than 1, you just take this picture and rotate it around an axis, and you get what happens with the two-sphere, um, which is the normal sphere that everybody's familiar with. So here's an example. Suppose I'm a three-dimensional person, and I know what a cube looks like, but I want to show my plant and a friend who's two-dimensional what, what a cube looks like. So I'm going to do exactly the process that we're going to do later to, to deal with four-dimensional objects. So the first thing is I radially project. I make this beach ball cube. Uh, and then stereographic projection sort of flips it out. So, so the, the bottom square uh, down here, that ends up in the middle of the, the disk here, and the top square flips outwards. Um, and so one thing to notice here is suppose that uh, what's happening on, at points on the equator, so if you look down here, um, well, if you're on the equator, then, then z is 1, so x, y, z, well, x, y, sorry, z is 0, so x, y, 0 is going to x, y. So these, these points here, are not actually moving when you flip out. And these things up here are going out quite wide. Right. Um, it matters which, where the North Pole is, um, or rather it matters what the orientation of the, the polytope is uh, when you go through this process. So instead of uh, putting it here, suppose I, I tilt the, the cube upwards, so the vertex is now at the North Pole, and then you get something different. Here's the radial projection, and then the uh, stereographic projection. Since there was a vertex at the North Pole, that goes out in from far and I get something which has a different symmetry uh, in the image in R2 um, than I did uh, when I had the, the cube oriented, uh, oriented so that uh, the north pole was in the center of one of the places. <coughs> and so you do the same thing on one dimension. Here's the, the tesseract or the hypercube. And I can't show you the intermediate pictures, but this is what you get afterwards in R3. Uh, so, okay, so this picture here is the cell center projection of the 120 cell. Um, so the North Pole is in the middle of one of the dodecahedral cells, and you go through this process, and this is what you get. And it has dodecahedral symmetry when you finish doing everything. So you've lost a lot of symmetry. The 120 cell has 120 dodecahedra, and all of them are the same. But here, we've lost mo most of that symmetry, but we still have retained dodecahedral symmetry in the image. Uh, 
Um, here's an alternative thing you could do. You could start with um, the uh, quantum 20 cell uh, with the north pole of the vertex, and then you go forward, and again, these edges go out to infinity, and what you end up with has a tetrahedral symmetry, which has less, so it's less symmetry, so there's less sort of combinations and ways in which uh, pieces can be combined together, less possibilities for making bubbles. There are other sort of reasonable things you might do as well, other ways to project that have even less symmetry and so less possible. Okay, so um, how do we understand what is going on with the 20 cells? So here's, here's one way uh, to look at it. So um, let's start with one dodecahedron at the south pole of, of the free sphere. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the layers of dodecahedra moving outwards from this first dodecahedron. And we can measure distances in the free sphere by an angle, just as you would on the two sphere, the usual sphere. So next to this central dodecahedron, <coughs> There are 12 dodecahedra at distance pi over pi, they're right next door. And then the next layer out, there are 20 dodecahedra at distance pi over 3. Another 12 at distance 2 pi over 5. And 30 at distance pi over 2. So these are, these are on the equator, right? They're halfway from the North Pole to the South Pole. And I've got 30 of them there. And it turns out um, the last four layers, you're, you're sort of building the other half of the 120 cell. And, and the pattern is mirrored. So you get another layer of, of uh, 12 uh, dodecahedra, another layer of 20, 12, and 1, and there's out to 120, so you've covered all. Uh, here's another way to think about the 120 cell um, by something called the Hopf vibration, um, which uh, you won't need to know what it, what it is, I'll just sort of show you the idea. So suppose I start with a dodecahedron, and I start with one of the faces of that dodecahedron. Then I can imagine traveling through that dodecahedron to the opposite pentagonal face. And then that pentagonal face is part of another dodecahedron. You go through that one, and you carry on going around. And it turns out that after 10 dodecahedra, you've come back to where you started. So you have these rings of 10 dodecahedra. <coughs> now, if you start somewhere else in another dodecahedron, it turns out that you can make another ring, and it sort of wraps around the first one. Um, and then you put in another one, and another one, and another one, and so it turns out that each ring of dodecahedra is surrounded by five others. So I haven't put the last one in yet. There's this sort of uh, Death Star trench down here. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the fifth uh, chain of or ring of dodecahedra around this first one. And so, okay, so how many have we got so far? We've got six rings of ten dodecahedra each. So that's 60. So we're halfway done. So where are the other ones? Um, so the other half consists of five more rings that wrap around these. And then one more extra ring goes through the whole thing. So, so let's, let's carry on going. So here's one, two, three, four, five more rings. And we've only got one ring left, and we're actually, sitting, we're actually standing inside of that, uh, that 12th ring. And it sort of goes in through the hole here. Um, I haven't drawn that in because you wouldn't be able to see anything. <laughs> and so once you've got 12, so 120. So um, we like uh, 3D printing things, so we wanted to 3D print um, the inner six rings, the, the core ring and then the, the five <coughs> around that. And we ran into a problem. Um, so when you're 3D printing something, some pieces that are supposed to be able to move against each other, you can't print them uh, when they're actually touching because then it all pieces together in, in the machine and you don't have anything that moves. So we had to try and arrange these pieces in the, in the file so that they, they would be uh, separate in printing. And we discovered we could only do the central ring and then two others. Um, we couldn't actually fit any more in around here because otherwise there, there was no way it seemed to get them to not crash. And uh, so we did that. That's, that's this, this thing here. It's, this is only two of them. And uh, it comes apart. And you can sort of play around with it. But we really wanted to do uh, five uh, of these rings around the central ring. Um, so what do you do? Um, so we cheated. Um, we said, okay, let's not do the whole ring, let's remove part of it. So I'm going to remove these four uh, largest dodecahedra here, and then I've got a piece that I can print separately. It's not linked with the other one, so I don't need to um, have them arranged in some complicated way. So then I can put my uh, five uh, ribs of all these, because they're sort of curved and made of dodecahedra, just like ribs. <laughs> and then they're made of white plastic anyway. Um, so let's take away the, the, the central ring. We don't actually need it. We've got this uh, this nice uh, construction, and this was our first problem. 
So you take these five ribs, uh, which are chains of six dodecahedrons on these, on these rings, and then you, you're supposed to put them together to form one of the well, This is all the same object as seen from different views. And so we call this the DC30 ring. So the D stands for dodecahedra, the C because it's from the cell center projection, and 30 because there are 30 dodecahedra in the positive. Um, so here's a, another decomposition that you can do. Uh, with even, even shorter ribs. So, so, this, so we're starting with, so we call this, this the spine. This, this was part of the ring that I didn't show you, the, the, the 12th ring uh, from the decomposition. And then I can have uh, five short ribs that wrap around that, these sort of inner ribs which are right next to the spine, and then five more which wrap around these, like this. And so we call this the, uh, the DC45 meteor. Um, so again, uh, see it's still in the cell center projection, now, this time they're 45. And uh, so, so we settled on having uh, six different kinds of, of rib. Um, so there's the spine that I just mentioned, and then there's these, these two inner guys, which are the ones that wrap around uh, the central spine, of two different lengths. So the difference between the inner four and the, the inner six is just um, do we include the, the, the end dodecahedra? And then there's these two outer guys, the outer four and the outer six. Same thing again, and then the equator here um, goes around. So, so this, this is two of, two of these which fit together to make the central ring that we started with. Um, and with these six pieces, you can make all kinds of things. So there are enough different kinds of puzzles um, that we needed a name, so we call it quintessence. And I'll, I'll tell you later if you're interested in why we chose such a pretentious name. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a puzzle for you. Two of these are photographs of the same object seen from different directions. Any ideas? Anybody pull out? The first one? Uh, that's not duplicated anyway, sorry. It, it's, it's almost impossible. Actually, there are two pairs which are the same. Um, this guy is the same as this guy, and this guy is the same as this guy, and this is telling us Photographs are not the way to understand this. <laughs> you need to hold them in your hands or have a video or something like this. Um, so it's always good to have a theorem um, in your talk. So here's a theorem. At most six inner ribs are used in any puzzle. At most six outer ribs are used in any puzzle. And at most ten inner and outer ribs are used in any puzzle. And here's the proof. So, so this is, this is a, an inner six, or if you remove the, the cyan that they gave this is an inner four. And this was the second layer of dodecahedra out from the central dodecahedra. And there are 12 of these here. And each red inner rib has two orange dodecahedra, so you can use the most six of them. You can't fit more than that in because each one of them picks up two of these dodecahedra. Uh, second fact, six outer ribs, essentially the same argument. The, uh, let's see, one, two, three, the fourth layer is this green layer, which has 12 dodecahedra. Again, the outer ribs have these two green dodecahedra here, so you can have the most six of them. And the last one, the third layer has 20 yellow dodecahedra, and the inner guy and the outer guy both pick up two of those yellow guys. Um, and we have puzzles which hit all of these, um, all of these limits. What are the other possibilities? What else can you do with this? Um, well, so we can try uh, vertex-centered instead of uh, cell-centered, and that's what we did. Yeah, so this is the, the DV30 asteroid, again, V because it's vertex center. Um, and these six pieces uh, with five dodecahedra each uh, come together to build this, this object here. Um, as I said before, the, the vertex center has tetrahedral symmetry, which is a lot, a lot less uh, possibilities for putting things together. And um, as far as we're aware, this is the only thing that this makes, which is a little disappointing. We'd love to be proved wrong if you can find anything. Um, what else uh, is there? What about other uh, polyhedra? Uh, sorry, other polytopes. So the 600 cell is one of the other um, four dimensional uh, polytopes. Uh, it's got 600 tetrahedra. It's dual to the 120 cell. And you can do um, something similar with this. So, so I've also got that over on the table. All of these puzzles that uh, are available, you can have a look at them. And uh, so you have these, these 20 ribs that uh, form together to make this guy here. Um, there's a bit of a problem with tetrahedra in that how do you make a, um, a ring? You want to go from one face of your polyhedron to the opposite face. With a tetrahedron, there isn't an opposite face. 
So you have to do something else. That you have these sort of twisting um, chains of tetrahedra. So the pieces are pandemous, which uh, puts a lot more restrictions on how they can, uh, how they can be combined. And uh, we looked at the other regular polytopes. Um, the, the next um, largest one is the 24 cell, which is a big step down from 120, has 24 octahedral uh, cells. And uh, it doesn't look like there's much you can do with it. It looks like um, it's just, there's just, you can make one or maybe two puzzles, but that's about it. Uh, and uh, uh, everything else is, is uh, the 16 cell, the, the 8 cell, otherwise known as the hypercube. You're going to be tough pressed to make anything interesting when you've only got 8 cubes. To um, so, thanks very much. I'll, I'll just mention um, uh, YouTube channel has videos of all these things and much, much of the rest of the stuff. And all the stuff is available on Shape Thanks very much. We've thought about it, we haven't experimented with it. Um, so face centered, uh, you're going to have, uh, the symmetry is going to be um, dihedral with 10 elements. So it's going to be even smaller than tetrahedral. So you can certainly draw the pictures. Um, whether or not you get interesting possibilities for how to put them together is a different question. One thing you could do if you, if you felt really evil is you could say, project from something that doesn't have any symmetry at all get an enormous collection of dodohedra, you print them all out individually, and then you have an impossible jigsaw. Mm -hmm. And you have 120 dodohedra to get together. But um, probably wouldn't be. Sorry? 119. That's true. Yeah. You have to be sitting inside. <laughs> yes.